you're playing and you hear something like you heard when you were playing against Roma and you've heard, unfortunately, when you've played against other teams, what does that make you feel? After what happened to the last game, no? uh, I feel a little bit uh, alone. And I always said that if it happened in the stadium, like nobody say nothing and I don't care. But this time, I think I changed my mind a little bit. And if it's going to happen one more time, I'm going to leave the pitch because it's so stupid. When I first started making this video, I intended for it to become a light-hearted showcase of the life of Mario Balotelli, the stories that he's had of his time in Manchester, and an update into the life that he's currently living now. However, the more that I researched into Mario Balotelli, one topic stayed consistent, and that was racism. Now, for me personally, I cannot do a video about Balotelli, about him being a silly boy and a funny little goof when he has suffered a astronomical amount of abuse several times throughout his career while on the football pitch. Time after time after time again. Of course, if you don't know me, I am indeed white and I know that that may have some connotations of its own that I could be white knighting and being a hero for Balotelli but Balotelli doesn't need anyone to be a hero for him. When I was searching online for other Mario Balotelli stories a lot of them went into the failed wonder kid and he's failed in his career and where is he now but none of them seem to highlight one consistent theme throughout his entire career and that has been his battle with racism, predominantly the problem of racism in Italy. In today's video, we break down the history of Mario Balotelli with racism and most importantly, start a conversation of how we can move into a better future. Education, bans, you tell me down below. Thank you all so much for the love on the channel. I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate it and how much I'm enjoying doing these football investigation type videos. 80.9% of you who have watched the channel recently have not been subscribed. So if you would like to see more content like this, then hit that sub button. Let's try to hit 2,500 likes and let's get into the video. Mario Balotelli Bawara was born on the 12th day of August in 1990 at Palermo, Italy. He was the second of four children born between his mother Rose and his father Thomas. Mario was an Italian national of black ethnicity with Ghanaian roots and was diagnosed with a life-threatening intestine complication after birth, a condition which his poor parents at the time could not afford to treat and were left with no option to offer him up for adoption when he aged three. As a result, young Bellatelli was raised up by foster parents Sylvia and Francesco Bellatelli ever since he was aged three. Growing up with the Bellatellis, young Mario was allowed regular visits to his biological parents during the weekends. By the time the football prodigy was aged 11, he had joined the youth systems of AC Limazane. Regardless of his early life complications, he was obsessed with sport. In his early career, he had tryouts at Barcelona, but sadly did not get offered a contract and was signed by Inter Milan on loan in 2006. Balotelli at Inter Milan became the youngest ever player to score in a Champions League game of 18 years and 85 days, at the time making him the youngest goal scorer in Inter Milan history. However, during his childhood and during his football career, he faced insurmountable challenges that border on racist chants against him, as well as his ability to be a disciplined player. Bellatelli soon started missing practice sessions and infuriated Inter Milan fans by appearing on an Italian TV show wearing a t-shirt of the club's rivals AC Milan. Late 2010 was a period that opened up a brand new chapter in Mario's life as he got signed to Manchester City. He scored on his debut in a 3-0 win. The centre forward went on to establish himself as a fan favourite with the Manchester City faithful and by the end of the year won the Golden Boy award for his remarkable season. During his time in Manchester, this is where the main bulk 
of the famous Balotelli stories came out. And I'll give you quite a few here because, I'll be honest, they are quite funny. One example is that Balotelli went out to get an ironing board for his new Manchester home. Mario, obviously, understandably, returned from John Lewis with a quad bike, a trampoline and a scale electric set. Quite different to an ironing board. Another example was that Euro 2012, he had a muted celebration, in which, in an interview afterwards, he was asked, why is his celebrations so muted? Mario responded, I'm only doing my job when a postman delivers letters, does he celebrate? Fair enough, Mario. So, obviously, for the next game, he then scores against Germany and then takes his shirt off with the famous celebration. In defense, I've never seen a postman do that. And then there's a time that he attempted a back heel in a pre-season game in America, in which instantly he got subbed off by Mancini. And then there's so much else I could go into, fireworks, darts, thrown at children, which that's a story for itself to be fair. The point is, is that Balotelli was a very unique footballer because he clearly had incredible talent. However, his discipline and his personality seemed to almost distract him and distract other people from appreciating his talent. When people speak about it now, they speak about the personality and the antics that he got caught up with and not what he actually achieved. Balotelli scored twice in a weekend which Manchester United got defeated at home to Manchester City 6-1. That is when he unveiled the t-shirt that said, why always me? His reward, a day or two later, he was named the Manchester's official ambassador for fireworks safety after lighting up fireworks in his bedroom. Still, his reputation kept being synced. In January of 2013, Balotelli was suspended for four matches for stepping on the head of Scott Parker. A month later, Balotelli was dropped for Italy's next few games. One of the coaches at the time, Prandelli, said that he seems a little agitated to me. Further on, saying, when I say we have to reach the European Championships prepared, I mean I don't want to see players who at the first sign of difficulty commit reaction fouls and get sent off, leaving their teammates to struggle with 10 men. In April that year, a 1-0 loss to Arsenal, Balotelli tackled Alex Song so recklessly that some believe Song was lucky not to have broken his leg. In the same match, Balotelli was sent off after two warnings for impetus challenges on Bakary Sagna. Mancini was incensed. It appeared that the club had blown an opportunity to win its first top flight title in England for 44 years. Mancini said, I finished my words for him. I love him as a guy, as a player, I know him. He's not a bad guy and is a fantastic player. But at this moment, I'm very sorry for him because he continues to lose his talent. I hope he can understand that he's in a bad way for his future and he can change his behavior, but I'm finished. Well, not quite, because in May 13th that year, Balotelli made the only assist in his entire Manchester City career to set up the winning goal for Sergio Aguero that won the Premier League for Manchester City. What was Mario's response? that his critics just have to shut up. That's his words. Balotelli went on in the Euro 2012 Championships, which he made a great name for himself for Italy, sending Italy to the final of the Euros by scoring two goals in a 2-1 win against Germany. The famous celebration, it all felt like it was meant to be. Balotelli, who suffered at the hands of the minority in Italy, would be the one to give them one of the happiest days of their lives. In his eyes, a way to prove himself. But sadly, it was not meant to be. But he never should have had that pressure on him in the first place. His colour has contributed to a kind of otherness in the eyes of Balotelli, a sense of being different, an outsider, a foreigner in his own country. That appears evident in the way that Mario has been treated by opposing fans at Euro 2012 and by his own people while playing in Italy, some of whom has taunted him with racial slurs. The Spanish Football Federation was fined about $25,000 by UEFA after fans directed monkey chants at Balotelli during the groups. Croatia's Football Federation was later fined about $100,000 after its fans also made monkey chants towards Balotelli, and photographs surfaced of a banana being picked up off the turf 
by a sideline steward. Some criticise UEFA for imposing a smaller penalty for racism than the nearly $126,000 fine it charged on Denmark's Nicholas Bettner for displaying underwear that bore the name of a betting company. Before the Euros, Balotelli told France Football Magazine that he would not tolerate racism, recounting a time when someone had thrown a banana at him in a bar in Rome. As famously quoted by Mario, if that happened in the streets of Poland or Ukraine for the Euros, I will go to jail because I will kill them. If Mario noticed racial abuse in the stands, Balotelli said that he would walk off the pitch and return home. The referees have been empowered to temporarily stop and abandon matches if racist acts occurred, but none of the games involving Balotelli while being racially abused on the pitch has been interrupted. Michael Platini, UEFA's president, said beforehand that any player who left a match without the referee's permission would be subjected to a yellow card warning. Euro 2012 was a damning example of the reality of life for players like Mario Balotelli, and trust me, he is not the only one. You can find examples of him being racially abused on the football pitch as early as 2009, with the Inter president backing Mario while he aims at Juventus fans, saying that he would have pulled his team off the field if he had been present for the 1-1 draw of Juventus where Mario Balotelli was racially abused by home fans. One of the chants that the Juventus fans chanted towards Balotelli was, if you jump up and down, Balotelli dies. Next up, the next racist abuse in 2010. While Balotelli were playing for Italy against Austria in a friendly, it was reported that mostly from Italy fans, he was taunted by a group of approximately 100 extreme right-wing Italian supporters. The fans held up a banner that read no to a multi-ethnic national team. In 2011, fortunately, I didn't find any articles that said that he was racially abused, so maybe we're making progress, but sadly, you already knew what happened in 2012 when both Spain and Croatia got fined for racially abusing him. But it wasn't only that, in 2012, both Yaya Torre and Mario Balotelli also accused Porto fans of making monkey noises in a Europa League game in early 2012. Also in 2012, by the Italian newspapers, after the result against Germany, they had a headline which said La Abbiamo Fatti Neri, which translates in Italian to We Have Made Them Black. This one may be a bit more looser, I guess featuring a pun with Mario Balotelli's skin colour, however, with his history with Italian football and racism, probably wasn't thought out too well. Also in 2012, something which could be as well quite loosely, but in the Gazetta, they had a cartoon of Mario Balotelli as King Kong. Again, maybe a pun, but a bit ill thought. Now we go on to 2013. Is there any racism? Of course there is. As Inter Milan gets fined $66,000 after fans racially abused Mario Balotelli in the Milan derby between Inter and AC Milan. In 2013, he was racially abused again while playing for Inter Milan in a match between AC Milan and Roma. The referee, Gianluca Rocci, called the game to a halt in the second half and warned the crowd via the public address system, with much credit to him. After several minutes delay, the match continued and ended in a 0-0 draw. Roma was fined €50,000 by the Italian league on Monday, after hearing monkey chants towards him and his teammate Kevin Prince-Boltang. This is when we see this interview with CNN threatening to walk off the pitch if it gets racially abused again. Also in 2013, there was a racist remark by the AC Milan vice president. He was at a political meeting in Monza and was filmed by reporters. The clip found has him saying this. Of course, I'm going to censor the N-word said here, but trust me, you can search it up, but it is the hard R N-word said here by the vice president of the football team. If it sounds like I'm going on and on here, it's because I am. This is in a space of four years and I can literally go on for, I, I wanna say an hour, of the racist abuse that Mario Balotelli has garnered in his lifetime playing football. And remember, 
he's only 32 right now. People will have a go and point their finger at Bellatelli and remember him as a really happy-go-lucky, what a silly boy, he can't put a bib on and oh look, he, he takes his shirt off and says, why always me? When in reality, he is going through hell on a monthly basis and experiencing the most heinous sh you have ever seen in your life and it is normalized it is seen as a slap on the wrist things haven't changed things haven't changed in the last decade not a single thing has changed and i can go on here for so long i could put an article here and then here and then here and then here and then here and i can probably keep popping up more articles of him being racially abused by this isn't on about people online because people online on instagram and on twitter they're pussies they are brain dead they are useless they are not a contributing member of society and they are seen in the same light from normal people like you and me as rats on the street. When I entered this video, I was going to do a WTF happened to Mario Balotelli and I was looking into all the funny stories and let's see how he's doing now. He's playing football in Switzerland. But the more I looked into it, the same thing kept popping up and I thought, surely this can't be the same incident. And it's not. It's four or five, several incidents from the same football club in Italy. I'm sorry here, but I'm going through article after article after article. This is normalized. You see an article every week. Oh, we got racially abused again. Okay, put that in the newspapers, get a few clicks. Oh, isn't it a shame? And then you forget it next week. And then the next player is racially abused. And this is just one player. This is just one player in Italian football. Not just I guarantee, you know, you know, I know the amount of other footballers, black footballers who get racially abused on on a week by week basis at the football pitch online in social media and in this example here by the f***ing vice president of the football club that he plays for and is an employee of i need to take a step back i'm sorry i'm pissed like this is a disgrace and i have so much more respect for him because of how he's responded back to the level of racist abuse that he's got he was given a Hand out life, having a terrible illness at an early age and then finding himself in the foster care system because his own parents can't look after him and pay for his own medication and support and then being adopted by a new living family in Italy and being told that he's not one of them week in, week out. Respect to Mario and respect to him for making us think that he's just a really funky guy and that he's just got such a funny personality because if he didn't have that, then all he would be remembered for is racism because that is what has followed him for his entire career. I can keep showing more articles here from 2014 to 2015 to 2016 to 2017 to 2018 to 2019 and yes, even now in this f***ing modern era. I've got to end the video now. I'm so sorry for losing my cool but this has really, really pissed me off. My deepest sympathy to Mario Bellatelli, but really to anyone who may be watching this video who has experienced racism. As, of course, as a white person, I may not be able to truly understand the pain that some people go through in their life. I try, and I know a lot of people try. 99% of humanity tries to do the right thing and to treat everyone equally. However, sadly, the 1% or maybe in terms of your own opinion of 5% or the 10%, they let humanity down and they paint us all as humans with the same brush of hatred. And I truly hope that with education and with, may I say, a f***ing good slap, we can eradicate this filthy disease from this earth one by one. Thank you for your time. I didn't expect this video to go this way, but this is it. So. Thank you very much. If you want more football investigations, feel free and comment, like, sub subscribe. I, I, f I feel weird saying this at the end of a video like this, but I do have great passion investigating football and um, I hope that my next video is a lot more happier than this one. So yeah, I hope to see you guys then. Thank you for your time and for your support on the channel. And yeah, have a great day.